Hey, it's Andre. Before I started filming my videos on my Sony camera, I used to film all of my videos on my phone. And if you're thinking of doing the same, but waiting for the extra gear, don't. All you need is this. And if you've already started filming with your phone and want loads more flexibility than the settings and you get that's available in the native camera, have you tried using Filmic Pro? In this video, I'm going to give you a quick run through all, or at least most of the settings that you'll find within the Filmic Pro app. I've set up a mini little studio here in Lego that we're going to use as our filming stage and the role of the presenter shall be played by this guy. Let's get everything into position and begin with the first thing you'll see when you open the Filmic Pro app on your device and that's the camera view. You see those two reticules in the middle, one there and one there. Both of them are freely movable around the screen. The square one is for focus and the circular one is for the exposure. There isn't too many dark spots in the scene where exposure is going to drastically change, but if there were light and dark areas, the auto exposure would adjust for those conditions. With both reticules, tapping on them again will make them go red, locking in the current value of that particular reticule, whether it's focus or exposure. And that value will stay the same until you press the red reticule again and return it to white. The good thing about when they are in the red phase is that even if the reticule is moved around the screen, as long as it's in the red phase, then those values will still stay the same. A good rule of thumb when you are using Filmic Pro is set your focus first before setting your exposure. If you want finer controls, pressing and holding onto the reticule will bring up these dials, allowing you to have more precise and manual control, but more on those later on. Let's go through what else is on this main camera view screen. On the right, you've got the left and right channel external volume monitoring, which displays the current loudness of the surrounding sound and gives you the ability with this slider to control the maximum loudness of the input sound. At the bottom, it shows which microphone the input sound is coming from. If I'm just using my iPhone, then I can choose from the back, front or stereo microphone. But whichever microphone you are using, it will display it here. You've got this lever here, which gives you some zoom control. While you also have zoom control by holding onto the focus reticule, you've also got it here with that slider that goes up and down. The next one round is the record button. When you want to press record, it will start recording and you can see that counter starting. Pressing it again will obviously stop the recording. This play button here, if you're saving your clips directly within the app, if you press this button, everything you've recorded will be visible in here. From here, you can delete the clip, replay the clip, select it and multiple clips, filter, save it to the camera roll and share it. We'll come on to the settings cog in a moment. This one here allows you to cycle through the phone's different lenses. Because I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro, I've got four different lenses to work from. The wide, ultra wide, telephoto and selfie lens. So choosing what lens you want can be also done here. The middle display gives you the current information about the clip to be recorded. So we've got the timer, we've also got the frames per second that this video will record in, and the video quality, in this case 4K. On this side of the middle display you've got the battery life of your phone and the amount of storage that you've got left. What this info tab also gives you, if you press on it, is the display of your histograms. So if you want a little bit more detail into your recording environment, if you click on that once, you'll get the full luminosity histogram. Click on it again and you'll get the histogram with composite and RGB layers. And again, and you'll get the waveform monitor. And finally, if you press it again, you'll go back to the timer. And if you want some more live analytics when you're filming, then there is the next button, which when pressed, you'll get these icons up here. So you've got the zebra stripes, and the next one is clipping. And the next one across is the false color. And then the final one, FP, is the focus peaking. The next one is manual controls. When you click on it, you'll notice that this brings up the same dials you get when you press and hold onto the reticules. But with the manual control button, you'll get both on screen at the same time. You've got the full manual control of the exposure on the left and focus and zoom on the right. With focus, it's as simple as adjusting the dial to customize the focus. If you press zoom, it now switches to manual zoom, allowing you to go in and out. 
On the left you can control the ISO value and the shutter speed. This side is different from the right hand side because in order to change the value you've got to lock in the value you want to stay the same. So to change the ISO, lock the shutter speed, adjust the dial and customise your ISO and vice versa with changing the shutter speed. If you want to reset your values you can always go back to the main camera view, hit the reticules which are most likely going to be red at this stage because of those changes that you've made in your manual controls and they will automatically readjust to the settings of the environment. To bring up the individual manual controls you can swipe from the right to bring in the focus and zoom and swipe from the left to bring up the exposure. The next one across is imaging panel, which presses on it will bring up this box. You've got the fully customizable temperature and tent control, which makes changes in real time. There are also some finer controls if you want to make changes to only the temperature or just the tint. By default, it is set to auto white balance based on your recording environment. If you look at that figure in the bottom left, you'll see the effect of having auto white balance on. There are also some presets, incandescent, sunlight, cloudy, and fluorescent. If you want to create your own temperature and tint blend, there are two custom presets that you can save your settings to. Make your preferences, press and hold either A or B, then you'll get the option to save the current values to preset, or if you've previously saved your preference, then you can load it from there. If you want some more premium presets, click here, and that gives you a range of different presets to choose from, but unfortunately you will have to pay for those. If you've bought the Filmic Pro Cinematology Kit, then you get these further custom settings. This one is Tone, which allows you to add shadow, highlights and film in different profiles such as natural, dynamic, flat and log V2. But that's if you're a little bit more advanced. This bit here allows you to change the black, mid and white points giving you more adjustments and a lot more finer controls and thankfully a reset button up there if everything goes wrong. The last one on this side panel that's also available if you've purchased the cinematology kit, the colour behaviour panel. You get the RGB, saturation and vibrance adjustments. Oh, and a reset button. Let's now go into the settings menu by pressing the cog, bringing up this panel and all those different options. Let's go into this one first, which is resolution. Looking at the top, you've got different framing options. I film mainly in 16x9, but there are other options to film in depending on your preference. Crop source to overlay, enabling this makes it obvious within the viewfinder where your current filming frame is. With 16x9, it uses the full screen, so this option isn't available. But if I was to choose 17x9, which doesn't fit the screen, shown by the framing guide if you can see it, Having this on, you'll see the black bars which show your filming canvas and thankfully it will change and alter depending on which resolution you're filming. Next one here gives you the option to change your recording quality. I've got it set to 4K, but you can go all the way down to 540p. Depending on the phone you're using, you've got more quality options. Here it's set to 8-bit, you can also choose 10-bit or Dolby Vision HDR. I like to film in the highest possible quality, so I've got it on Filmic Extreme, but you can go all the way down to Filmic Quality, Apple Standard, which is the quality that the native camera app films in on the iPhone, and Economy. Economy will take up the least amount of storage, while Filmic Extreme will take up the most. So bear that in mind when you decide which video encoding rate you're going to use. And then you can decide whether you're going to film in H.264 or HEVC. And once again, if your phone is compatible, you've got the option to film in video HDR and tone mapping. As both are to do with the quality of the end video, when enabled, both will add to the size of the recording. The next setting is frame rate. Here I can set anything from 24 frames per second all the way up to 60 in standard. You can choose to alter the capture and playback FPS from here as well. You can also do time lapses within Filmic Pro. So if I was to press time lapse, then I've got a number of second intervals all the way from one second to one minute. 
you can see that 120 and 240 FPS is greyed out. That's because the video resolution is set to its highest at 4K. So if we go back into resolution, change 4K and reduce it to 720p, go back into frame rate, and now you can see 120 and 240 FPS are now available. The next is audio. This is where we can select the different microphones. So for example, on the iPhone, if you've got the back, stereo, front and bottom microphone, as mentioned earlier, whichever microphone you do choose, it will be displayed in the bottom corner in the camera view screen. And this also works if I were to add an external microphone as it would also be listed there as well. You can select the different audio encoding formats from AIFF to PCM and AAC. I usually keep it on the default, which for me is AIFF. You've also got the different audio sampling rates from 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. Those options will be dependent on the microphone that you're using's capabilities. If you want to attach a Bluetooth microphone, if you only want to record the video only with no sound, then you would select that. Automatic gain correction, which is good at adjusting the gain of the microphone, whether that's an internal one or an external one. Voice processing, which if you're filming a mainly voice centered video, it's gonna make those voices sound a lot better. And a new setting to Filmic Pro, notify if silent audio. So if it doesn't detect any audio, then it's going to let you know so you can make the necessary corrections. The next one here is device. So we've got save to camera roll. So if you don't want to save within the app itself and you wanna save it to the camera roll, you just select that. If you use Filmic Remote, like I do either on my Apple Watch or iPad, enabling this will allow you to do that. So if you don't use Filmic Remote, then you don't really need those enabled. Remote Preview is also linked to the Filmic Remote app. Click up there if you want to see my video on Filmic Remote. Orientation Lock, so if I was to change my phone from landscape to portrait, it would keep the interface in its current orientation dropped frame indicator so you can get notified if there's a drop in frame rate for some reason stitch recorded video with that enabled it allows you to record something and if i was to press record again it pauses the recording so if i press it again it continues recording and then once i do a long press on the record button to stop the recording it will combine everything recorded there onto one whole clip Preview Active, when this is enabled, allows you to use your phone screen as a viewfinder. As default, it is set to on, but if you're using something like Filmic Remote, then with that enabled, you can use that as your primary viewfinder. Tap to hide interface. When this is enabled, when you press record and tap the screen, everything but the reticles disappear from the camera view. Good if you're using external monitors because it means that you've got a clean display, but if you want to show them again, just tap on the screen and they reappear. If you want the reticles to be hidden as well, enable hide reticles from interface. Then tap in the screen, we'll hide everything. Hide zoom rocker. If you don't want the zoom control showing on the right side of the screen, enable this. But if you do, the only way that you'll be able to control the zoom function will be to bring the zoom function in from the side or the manual control button. The self-explanatory volume keys trigger recording. The next setting is presets. If you film in different rooms or want different settings for different conditions, you can make customized choices within the other setting controls, come into presets and then save those choices. And if at a later date you need them, come back into presets and load up the preset. If you do need to remove any, then you can slide across and here you can rename or delete them. Next one here is CMS, which stands for Content Management System. This allows you to change the names of any saved clips. For time code track, if we go back to the main screen, the timer display is set to all zeros, but with time code track enabled, the formatting of the same clip will be done by time rather than duration. If you enable content management, this allows you to name your project files. So instead of the normal date time based file name, you can instead have it display properties of your project with reference to the production, scene and take. So if I were to call this one Lego, 
start the recording and stop there. As you can see, the clip file has now taken the name from the CMS settings. And if I go back to the settings and the next clip I do, we'll have the same name, but take two. Like this. And if we go back onto it again, the next one says take three. This will now allow you to arrange your clip files once they have been exported. The advanced tab just gives you a few more naming options. Useful if you're filming on multiple cameras or phones using Filmic Pro, then you can name the files from individual phones. You can get frame.io both here and in the main settings, but it allows you to upload recorded clips into the cloud provided you have an account. The next one is hardware. If you're connecting a monitor or computer to your phone and want a clean UI free screen, enable clean HDMI out. Check out my video on that feature. When clean HDMI out is enabled, you can choose whether you want audio to be sent as well. The good thing about Filmic Pro is that the app is compatible with certain gimbals like the DJI Osmo Mobile, the Zion Smooth 4 or 5, or the Movi Cinema Robot, all of which can be used directly within the Filmic Pro app. The other external accessories currently supported are anamorphic and 35mm adapters. The next one is Sync, similar to Frame.io, but here this allows you to store presets in the cloud and retrieve them onto many logged in devices or using Filmic Pro. Stabilization, if your phone is on a tripod like mine is here, then you don't really need any stabilization because it's stationary. But if you're vlogging or something like that, then you can choose from off, which I've got on because I'm using a tripod, standard, cinematic, and cinematic plus stabilization. Just remember the more stabilization you add, then the more latency and lag that you're gonna experience in your live view. So if I was to choose the cinematic plus stabilization, then you can just see how late that delay is between the actual and the display. But if I turn it off, it's pretty much instant. Next one is camera. Here you've got access to the available camera lenses. Same as choosing the camera lens from the main camera display. So now you've got two methods of choosing. If we go back into the settings, I can choose the ultra wide lens, the wide lens, the telephoto lens, or the selfie lens. And if you've got it installed, the double take app from Filmic Pro. The next one is Torch, which allows you to use your phone's flashlight as the source of light for your video in three different intensities shown here. The guide, which I always have on, allows me to be able to frame people or objects within the shot and obey the rule of thirds. The final one is information, which gives you any support and help that you might need when using the app. So now if I frame everything right, get what I need in focus and exposed correctly, then I'm now ready, and hopefully you are too, to press that record button. If you've got any questions about using Filmic Pro or there's something you want me to go a little bit more in depth on, just note them down in the comments below and I'll try and put them in a future video. But before you do, check out my other videos on Filmic Pro first. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.